Hi Megan, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Uh, Megan, are you there? Hi, sir. Yes, I am. Hi, great. So far only you have joined. Let's check for five more minutes and then we'll start. Okay, sir. Great. Uh, sir, last week I wasn't there, but I think you covered like a mock exam, was it? Uh, we started the mock. We couldn't finish it actually. Few okay. questions are there on that. We right. start from where we left. Okay. Uh, because I just saw the mock PDF file only, so I thought that's. I was wondering whether that was what was covered last week only. Yes, that was what we were doing, but we couldn't complete it. Okay. It's a mock paper from the DPP revision kit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, and sir, like, what do you think will be um other than finishing the mock exam, but what else will we be covering today? Uh, if we can finish it off on time, then we'll uh, start up with another mock. Okay. Well, let's focus on a bit of more questions because it's about how to present the answer at this stage. Okay. Right. So, all right, I can see a few more has joined. Let's wait for two to three more minutes for the others to join and we'll start. Hi, hi, bye, bye. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, guys. Uh, good evening to all of you all. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, last week I made a small request from you all, right? To attempt the balance questions in the mock before the class. How many of you all actually attempted? <laughs> yes, I said something like that. Uh, anyone attempted? Or oh, none of you all has attempted? Okay. <laughs> Muas couldn't attempt. I can understand from the reaction. The others? Uh, Nafis, Eshma, Manisha, how about you guys? Were you able to attempt those few questions? Or you guys also could not attempt it. Yes, today would be the last one. But like I said, by any chance, if you guys need any help, always just reach out to me. There is no problem in that. Uh, today would be the last one that we are doing for this TRG one. Okay, I can see no one has attempted. Okay, Nafis has attempted only section B, right? No worries. Okay, there's a request for some last minute tips. Yes, a uh, few things are there that I want you all to be a bit careful. Uh, number one, as I have been con uh, continuously saying, be a little bit focused on the study hub questions because like we discussed on the last week also, there were certain exam subjects and certain exam papers where some stuff has been directly taken from the study hub. So tax that hasn't happened yet, but you never know, you might be the lucky batch. So be careful, focus a little bit more on the study hub questions. And apart from that, be a little bit careful on your timing. Still you can do. If you are having, uh, I mean, by now, if you have any study leaves or for the next week, if you are full-time studying, still you can do it because study hub questions if you full time do it within one and a half to two days you should be able to wind up if you full time do it because there are some students who did that right uh the other thing is tax admin ah uh, no only study hub questions will not be sufficient but study hub questions will give us a better understanding about what kind of questions might be there in the exam. Because past papers has a past pattern. Some of these study hub questions are in a modern pattern. Uh... Okay, uh, first of all, who has logged in as Zoom users? Sorry, I'm a little comfortable with when I know the names. Can I know your good name, please, my dear? Yes, I agree with uh, Moaz's comment. Okay, it's Basil, right. So, uh, Basil, what I would suggest you is, uh, like Moaz said, it's never too late. Still, we have time. Still, we can do that. Uh, we have only one week. So, if you're a little bit more extra hard work compared to the others. 
that's the only thing. But still, I agree with Moses' comment. It's never too late. So if you haven't tried by now, at all, rather than doing nothing. So start now itself and coming back for where we were, it's always better to have a bit of an idea about this. Uh, should we do the full kit? If the time permits, yes, go for the full kit. If the time does not permit, then only stick to areas like CGT, individual tax, corporation tax, and inheritance. Stick to these areas if the time does not permit you. Apart from that, be a little bit vigilant on the tax admin part. I requested everyone to go through the study hub on the tax admin part. Because for tax admin, in the recent past, I have seen that the number of marks that they're allocating has been gradually increasing. So better to have a thorough understanding about the tax admin part. So please refer the study hub also. Don't only stick to the handouts and the Kaplan or BPP books for the admin part. Just have a look at on the study hub also for the tax admin. Yes, actually there were instances in the last exam where they got around 10 marks in section C itself from tax admin, apart from what we had in section A and B. So there is a bit of a tendency that they have been gradually increasing the number of marks that they're allocating for tax admin. Yes, last time. Yes, last city. But don't worry that the person who got that, he got through. He got through with a very good mark as well. So don't worry. Can be managed. He got through with the flying colors. He got 65. It's good, right? When you have tax, that much of a tax admin and you're scoring 65 is good. Right. So I got a request on key areas. Uh, again, I'm saying we cannot say any area is not important. Because in the exam, you never know in which area your examiner asks the question. That is the biggest issue. So, but based on the past practices, usually uh, CGT, corporation tax, individual tax, basic concepts, and uh, inheritance. These has been the main areas that the examiner has been focusing on in the recent past. But having said that, like I said, the tax admin has also been one of those areas where your examiner is focusing in the recent past. Yes, that's almost 70% of the syllabus. I agree. But unfortunately, all these areas are tested in the exam. Because if you take your section C, usually the practice is corporation tax would be there. So we have to study. Individual income tax would be there. So we need to study. Inheritance or CGT would be so whatever inheritance or CGT, whatever not tested in section C, ignore any area. All these areas are frequently tested in our exams, so we cannot skip any. Then the next thing that you guys To do uh, better to do is focus on this uh, pre mox and all. Uh, 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 yes, tax planning is there, but guys, don't worry about this word tax planning. There is no separate education. In exam on how to plan taxes for an example one of my we have 
an issue in VAT. So threshold is going on that. So we have to deal with it. with the same thing we learned. Just apply it in a way to give a tax reduction in a legal manner to your client or the taxpayer. That is what tax planning is all about. Don't worry about these fancy words that they are using. It's only the basics that you have learned. Uh, can you hear me now? Sorry. Okay, so what I was saying is don't worry about these uh, fancy words that they use in the exam like tax planning and all. It is the same basic things that you learned. If you apply that in a way where you reduce the overall income tax liability of a taxpayer in a legal manner, that is what we call as tax planning. So it's just the stuff that we learned. They are just using a fancy word called tax planning. Right. So don't worry about these fancy words. Just stick to the basics. And the other thing, the most important thing, do not try to be Einstein in the exam. That's the biggest mistake most of the students do. Don't try new things in the exam. Only focus on whatever you studied. Based on what you studied, answer on that. Don't try to be Albert Einstein at the exam hall. That you would have done, they should have done while you were learning, not at the exam. Don't do experiments in the exam. Stick to the basics what you have learned. And make sure you present your answer in a polite and professional manner. Don't just go and put your answer here and there. The final answer. Make sure it you get the soft soft versions you get the Excel, you get the word. So you have cut pay options. Use bold inputs from your end. Uh, guys, can y'all hear me? All right, sorry, something happened. I was kicked out of Zoom. Right, so can we move forward with the paper then? If you don't have any further doubts. Great, so up to which point did we do in the paper? We finished section A. We didn't start section uh, B, right? Did we? Okay, uh, I can discuss, but my question is, if you don't practice, just discussing will not help you in the exam. That is my only concern. I'm okay either way. So what do you guys feel? Do you want to try first and then we discuss or we will go ahead and discuss? Can I have a vote in? Either way, I am good. I'll go ahead with the majority. Put a pool in the WhatsApp. Uh, how can I do it? I don't know how to do it in Zoom. Okay. Oh, 
फॉर एन ऑप्शन कॉल पूल ओके हाँ यार पूल से आते हैं क्रिएट Okay. Now I just need to save it. Is it? Then I need to click launch, right? Okay. Can you guys watch this? Okay. <laughs> I got only three. All three are for just discuss the others. Okay. We'll just discuss that. Majority goes go ahead with just discussing option. Fine. We'll go ahead with that then. Right. So. First scenario, we have Adana who dies on 17th March 2022. Okay, died means we are looking at IHT. Inheritance tax of 566,000 is payable in respect of her chargeable estate. Under the terms of her will, Adana left her entire estate to her children. Okay, that means she has given it to her direct descendants. Is that point important? Okay, two believes yes, and why is it important? Yes, residence nil rate ban might come into the picture if it is for the direct descendants. Good. At the date of her death, Adana did not own a main residence. Okay, she had the following debts and liabilities. An outstanding interest only mortgage, £220,000, income tax of £40,700 payable, legal fees of £4,600 incurred by Adana's sister, which Adana had verbally promised to pay. Adana's husband had died on 28th May 2006 and only 20% of his inheritance tax nil rate ban was used on his death. The nil rate ban at that time was £285,000. On 22nd April 2009, Adana had made a chargeable lifetime transfer of shares valued at 500,000 to a trust. Adana Two fifty arising from this gift. If Adana had not heard, it was because. Actually, network is there. The other sites that I have connected is working. I don't know why in Zoom. Last week also there was a problem in the, the Zoom account. Let's see. So, uh, you can hear me now, right?
Great. Okay, so how are we going to calculate this one? Let's discuss them. How we are how are we going to calculate? <laughs> now is it okay? Still the lagging is there? Is the lagging still there or are we okay now? All right. I'll stay a little bit more closer to the laptop. Uh, right. So how are we going to do this calculation now? What are your views? What should we do? Okay. We need to take husband's nil rate band. Then what about Adana's nil rate band? Plus Adana. Add both together. Okay. So that means husband's band was 285,000. That into 20% plus Adana's 325,000, is it? Okay. It's a straight no. Great. Then what should we do? Change it to current NRB into 80%. Okay, good. That is the husband's one. Then the Dana's one, we can straight away at 325,000, is it? Okay. I appreciate if the others also can join the discussion, please. I'm going to deal with this one. Adana's one, I take straight away. Husband's one, at that point, it was 285,000. So I take 285 from her husband's overall nil rate band. Then I figure out how much is unused. Out of 285, 20% is used means. 228,000 is new. Guys, give me one second to check why this is happening. One second.
thousand hour point every one. Hello. So can you hear me, right? Okay, uh, let's try Moaz's method just to take out the cam for the time being. Are we good up to this 228,000? Great. But this entire 228,000 we cannot grant. Why? Because the nil rate band during these two time periods are different. So we have to align this 228 like Nafiz and Mua said for the current band. So what we are going to do, current band is 325,000. We are taking the proportion. So 228 and 285, the proportion of that multiply by Uh, what you called 325,000, which gives me an amount of 260,000. Therefore, the overall nil rate band would be 585,000. Are we good? Great. So do we have this answer? Yeah, we do have the fourth one, 585,000. Then question number two. What is the total amount permitted? Give me a second, guys. Okay, so what are the deductions generally available under IHT? N uh, NRB, RNRB, a e okay apart from that these are more or less like allowances and reliefs you know apart from that when you are calculating is there anything that we can deduct when you are calculating the Chargeable estate. 
Okay, debts and funeral expenses, funeral costs. Can you hear me? How about now? Okay, give me a minute. All right, guys, let's continue and see. Can you hear me now or still is it lagging? Okay, great. So apart from the things that you guys do, anything else that we can detect from the test state? Any other things that we can so the all the
Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, I was having a bit of a concern. Uh, okay, for now, you can hear me, you know, let's go ahead. So uh, apart from what you guys have mentioned, I believe what Nafis has tried to say is not the marriage allowance, what you might have tried to say is interspouse transfers. Am I correct, Nafis? Is that what you tried to say? Uh, oh, okay. All right. No worries. So interspouse transfers you can deduct as well. So three main things that we can deduct, funeral expenses, debt, and interspouse transfers. Apart from that, there is one more questionable thing that can be deducted. That is any external commitments that legally given. Yes, legacies means the interspouse transfers. So apart from that, if there is any legitimate, if there is any other legitimate claim that we need to do, for an example, your credit cards, maybe you have a, what do you call, unsettled amount for uh, HMRC. Maybe you have legally committed to pay something to someone. Those stuff are allowed, but a legal commitment should be there. If there is no legal commitment, then that cannot be allowed to be deducted. Are we good? Right. So what are the things we have? What are such things that we have in this question that can be deducted from the death estate? Okay, great. Mortgages, super. We can allow mortgages. Yes, income tax we can allow. Good. What else? Great. We can allow mortgages. We can allow income tax. But whatever she has committed verbally, that cannot be allowed to be deducted. So this 4,600 legal fees is not allowed. The rest can be allowed to be deducted. So the answer would be like this. 220,000, 43,700. So the final deduction would be 263,700. <laughs> Usually, yes, better to have a written contract. But be careful, SMS is also considered as a written agreement in the current context. So be careful when you're sending SMSs. Right, question number 17, are we good? Anyone who's having any doubts about question number 17? <laughs> right. Question number 18 then. Indicate by clicking on the relevant boxes in the table below who will be responsible for paying the IHT of 566,000 in respect of Adana's chargeable estate, and what is the due date for the payment of this liability? First of all, who should pay? 
we have two answers beneficiaries of adana's estate that means her children personal representatives of adana's estate beneficiaries that means uh, adana's children is it was Right. So we have two different answers from Nafiz and Muas. The others, what are your thoughts? Come on, guys. Let's make a discussion. The others, please share your thoughts. Personal representatives or uh, the beneficiaries, which one? Yes, I go ahead with the answer, personal representatives. Why? The reason is, uh, if we ask the beneficiaries to pay that, by the time they receive it, the tax should have been paid because we do have a deadline for that. Personal representatives means they are the ones who will get the assets first, then only they will do the distribution among the beneficiaries so the personal representatives as soon as they receive it they have to uh, go ahead with the tax so responsible person would be the personal beneficiaries are we good with that right then what is the due date for the payment First, let's see when has she died. She died on 17th March 2022. Okay. So what is the deadline for the payment? Okay. 30th September. How did we ended up with 30th September? Great. It should be six months from the end of the month on which the person has passed away. So she has passed away on the 17th of March. So end would be 31st of March, six months from that. That is 30th September. So the answer would be personal representatives and 30th September. Everyone okay with that? Awesome. Then question number 19. How much of inheritance tax payable in respect of Adana's estate would have been saved if under the term of his, her will, Adana had made specific gifts of 400,000 to a trust and 200,000 to her grandchildren instead of lead, uh, leaving her entire estate to her children. So if she has made a in her last will, right? So in her last will, if she had made a specific gift to 400,000 to a trust and 200,000 to her grandchildren, what is the impact on her inheritance tax payable? What are your thoughts? You guys can hear me, right? Am I audible? Right. Then, uh, what would be the answer? What kind of an impact would there be if Adana has gifted uh, some amount to a charity from her last will and another part to her? Hmm grandchildren so 400000 to a trust 200000 to grandchildren what would have been the impact
IHT would reduce. Okay, I got one answer as IHT would reduce. The others, what are your thoughts? IHT would reduce. Why should IHT reduce? Let's question. Why should it be reduced? LFT rate is 25% or 20%. Okay. But yet again, at the death situation, it comes back to 40, right? When you are calculating the tax, once she has passed away, again, it will be adjusted to 40%, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Anyway, she is still she is still dead right just the difference is earlier her entire estate was written to her children but now we are changing that what if 400000 was written to a charity and another 200000 written to her grandchildren Skipping a generation, would it save tax? Uh, not at this point. I would say the impact would be zero. Because irrespective of whether it is given to children, grandchildren, trust or whatever, still it is liable for IST, right? Only thing that is not liable for IHT would be transfers among spouses, which Adana cannot do anyway because her husband is already passed away. So this would have a zero impact at the moment. But like was said, there is one advantage that is, let's say she transfer it into her children and children is are to pass away to their grandchildren. Her grandchildren, sorry. At that point, there would be a tax, right? That could have been saved, but that we cannot calculate because of two reasons. One, we don't know the tax rate at that time. Two, we don't know actually whether the children will pass away these assets to their own children or not. Ah... Uh... Yes, if they have married twice, also it is applicable. Yes, because legally it is the spouse, right? The second one would be the spouse in that case. It's applicable. So are we clear on the answer for this uh, question number 19? There won't be any impact. Everyone, are we clear with that? Super. Then question number 20. Last question on this particular scenario. How much inheritance tax did Adana save by making a chargeable lifetime transfer of 500,000 to a charity on 22nd April 2009 rather than retaining the gifted investment until her death? You are referring to 20th or 19th? Question number 20th or 19th was? 19th? No, there is no way because her spouse is also passed away. Are we good, Moas? Great. So 20th. Right. Question number 20th is asking, now she has made a gift, right? On uh, 2009, 
टूवर्ड चैरिटी फाइव हंड्रेड थाउजेंड पाउंड एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट ट्रांसफर विल दे आर बी ए सेविंग ऑन हर आई एच टी हाउ मच शी हैज सेव दैट इज वॉट वी नीड टू कैलक्युलेट Yes, I got two answers. Can the others also let me know what are their views? Save two hundred and seven, two hundred and seven thousand seven hundred fifty. Okay, can you guys explain me how you guys derived all these answers? And if you guys want, you guys have a wonderful feature called uh, unmute, and you can unmute and express your views as well. Six hundred and fifty into forty percent minus fifty two point two five. Okay, I got one answer. I mean, one answer. How did they derived? Okay, two answers. Yeah, this I received from Muas and. <laughs> Eshmuas and Eshma, I got the answers. The others, what are your answers? How, how did you derive the answers? <laughs> okay, let's see how to calculate that. So, according to the question. If the gift has not been made, the IHT. Uh, sorry. Uh, what do you call the? Uh, if the gift has not been given, then the death estate would have gone up by six hundred and fifty thousand pounds. So hundred and fifty into forty percent, a liability would have been there, an additional liability that comes to two hundred and sixty thousand. And There is a IHT paid already on this lifetime transfer. That is fifty two two fifty. Right now, that won't be paid. That shouldn't have been paid. If this has not happened, then I take it out. As a result, overall tax savings would have been two hundred and seven thousand seven fifty. Is that clear? This part is everyone okay? All right. Then I'm moving on to the second scenario on section B. Cat and kitten. Okay. Uh. Kitten is the controlling shareholder of Cat Limited, an unquoted trading company. So we have been given with details of Cat and Kitten both. Cat Limited sold a freehold factory on thirty first May two thousand and twenty two for three hundred sixty four thousand. Okay, fine. Seems like group, a chargeable gain group is coming into the picture. Okay. Which resulted in a chargeable gain of hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred. The factory was purchased on first of October two thousand and five for hundred and thirty eight thousand six hundred, 
and further capital improvements were immediately made at a cost of 23,400. During the month of purchase, further improvements to the factory were made during the month of disposal as well. The relevant indexation factor is 0.439. Cat Limited is unaware how to reinvest the proceeds from the sale of the factory. The company is considering either purchasing a freehold warehouse for 272000 or acquiring a leasehold office building on a 40-year lease for a premium of 370000 If either reinvestment is made, it will take place on 30th September. All the above buildings have been or will be used for the purpose of Cat Limited's trade. Keaton sold 20,000 one pound ordinary shares to Cat Limited on 5th October 2021, which resulted in a chargeable gain of 142,200. This disposal qualified for business asset disposal relief. So it has been qualified for BADR. Kitten had originally sub subscribed 90,000 shares of Cat Limited on 7th July 2010 at their par value. On 22nd September 2013, Cat Limited made a 2 for 3 rights issue. Kitten took up her allocation under the rights issue in full, paying 6.4 for each new share issued. Kitten also sold, sold, an, uh, sold an antique vase on 16th Jan 2022, which resulted in a chargeable gain of 28,900. For the tax year 2021-2022, Kitten had a taxable income of £12,000. Okay. What amount of uh, indexation allowance will be will have been deducted in calculating the gain of 120,700 on disposal of Cat Limited's factory? Okay, for the first part. On disposal of this factory, how much is the indexation allowance? Very simple. It's a bonus question. How would we calculate that? Seventy-one thousand one hundred and eighteen. Okay, guys, can everyone just share me? Cost into indexation factor. Yes, correct. What we simply need to do is cost into indexation factor. But there were improvements as well, isn't it? As and when they purchase there is a in uh, improvement that is for 23400 so we need to add that also so 23400 plus the cost of 138600 the overall cost would be 162000 that into the indexation factor so the indexation allowance would be 71118 Uh, yes, correct. Normally, that is the case, Moas. Are we okay? Right. Then, moving on to question number 22. If Cat Limited decides to purchase the freehold warehouse and makes a claim to roll over the chargeable gain on the factory, under the rollover relief rules, what will be the base cost of the warehouse for chargeable gain purpose? So how are we going to calculate this one? What are the factors we need to include here? Okay, I got one answer. The others? Yeah, no worries, Megan, no problem. Take the cost and minus and add it to the new asset. Sales price minus replacement. Right. So let's give a try. Let's go back to the Excel. Overall gain they have straight away given. So we don't need to calculate the gain. 
Uh, probably it will be there by uh, tomorrow, Megan. Probably it will be there by tomorrow. No eyes. Then we have the sales proceeds, which is 364,000. But the reinvestment is only 272,000. Out of 364, only 272 has been reinvested. That means 92,000 has not been reinvested. Then there is an immediate gain between the original gain and the unreinvested amount. That is 28,700 will be immediately taxable. Then the base cost would be reinvestment minus the immediate gain of 28,700, 243,300. Are we good with the calculation? Great. Then I'm moving on to the next question. Question number 23. If Cat Limited decides to acquire the leasehold of his building and makes a claim to hold over the chargeable gain on the factory under the rollover relief rules, what is the latest date by which the held over will crystallize? So now, instead of going for the freehold warehouse, they are thinking about going for the leasehold office building. If that is the case, up until when they can hold over the relief. Any ideas? What is the maximum period that they can hold over the relief in that case? Okay, I got one answer as 10 years, the others. We have two 10 years in this question, in this list of answers. So Nafis, which one are you referring to? And the others, what are your answers? Uh, Nafis, your answer is 10 years from 31st May 2022 or 10 years from 30th September 2022. The others, I am waiting for your answers. Okay, Nafis goes for D. Uh, Muas, Raisha, Eshma, what about you guys? Eshma also goes for D, okay. Okay, first let's check what are these dates that they are referring to. The sale has been happened on 31st May 2022. Replacement is happening on 30th September 2022. So we had a rule, right? We have to consider a few factors if we are reinvesting on a depreciating asset. That would be the date of first 10 days from the replacement, 10 years from the replacement, sorry. Uh, the date on which we sell the replaced asset, the date on which we ceased using the replaced asset for business purposes. We consider these three. Out of these three, earliest would be the date on which the gain will become liable for CGT. So the latest would be 10 years, isn't it? According to these three criteria. And the 10 years from the date of replacement is 10 years from 30th September 2022. So we can take the answer as D. Is it? Yeah. 
Anyone who oppose that answer? Right, we can go ahead with D. Question number 24. What cost figure will be used in calculating the chargeable gain on kittens disposal of 20,000 ordinary shares? So how are we going to calculate that? The cost. How are we going to calculate the cost? Okay, I got one answer from Nafis. The others, what are your views? Okay, great. So when it comes to corporates, first we have to check, are there any same day purchases? If not, we have to go for the nine day rule. If that is also not there, then we have to go for the pool. In this case, same day purchases are not there. Nine day rule is also not applicable. Then everything we need to go for the pool. So let's see how are we going to calculate that. Original investment is 90,000. Then from the rights issue, they are purchasing. Rights is... Uh, Two for each three shares that they are holding. So 90,000 uh, 90, divided by three into two, 60,000. That into 6.4, 384,000. So overall they have 150,000 shares and 474,000 value. So 474 divided by 20, the apportionment would come to 63,200. Are we okay? So the answer would be, Nafis was correct. We can take the answer as 63,200. Uh, Are we good with this one? Any doubts? Okay, great. Then the last question in this scenario. What is Kitten's capital gains tax liability for the tax year 2021-2022? So how are we going to calculate that? Okay, I already got the answer from Nafis. Let's do the calculation. So we have some assets which are qualifying for BADR. We have some assets which are not qualifying for BADR. Those two we have to split. So BADR qualifying gains, we have 142,200. Non-qualifying, we have 28,900. So whatever doesn't qualify for BADR, can we go for AEA? Can we take AEA? Yes, we are taking AEA as well because we are talking about Kitten is an individual. So AEA is available. Yes, and first priority when it comes to AEA, we have to give for non-BADR relating assets. So I am deducting it against the non-BADR qualifying assets. As a result, I have a taxable gain from BADR 142,200. Non-BADR 16,600. So for BADR assets, the rate would be 10%. So 142,200 into 10% means 14,220. Then non-BADR 16,600, that will be at 20% because uh, we don't have any excess remaining over the basic rate band, whatever hat is already absorbed by the BADR one, because the gain for BADR itself is 142,200. 
So the higher rate will come into the picture, which is 20%. So the overall gain would be 17,540. Are we good? Great. Then I'm moving on to next question. It's about Elisa. So Elisa commenced trading on 1st January 2021. Her sales since commence has been full loose. Okay, this is an interesting question. Jan to April 2021, 7,500 per month. May to August 2021, 10,000 pounds per month. September to December 2021, 15,500 per month. The above figures are stated exclusive of value-added tax. Aliza only supplies services and these are all standard rated for VAT purpose. Aliza notified her liability to compulsory register. Uh, notified her liability to compulsory register for VAT by the appropriate deadline. So no penalties would be there. For each of the eight months prior to the date on which she registered for VAT, Elisa paid 240 per month inclusive of VAT for website design services and 480 per month exclusive of VAT for advertising. Both of these suppliers are standard rate for VAT purposes and relate to Elisa's business activity after the date from when she registered for VAT. After registering for VAT, Elisa purchased a car on 1st Jan 2022. The motor car is used 60% for business mileage. During the quarter ended 31st March 2022, Elisa spent £456 on repairs of the car and £624 on fuel for both her business and private mileage. The relevant quarterly scale charge is 290. All these figures are inclusive of VAT. All of Elisa's customers are registered for VAT. So she operates, uh, sorry, so she appreciates that she has the issue VAT invoices when services are Supplied. So she is issuing that invoices. So nothing to worry. From what date would Aliza have been required to compulsory register for VAT and therefore had to charge output VAT on her supplies of services? Okay. First of all, what is the deadline for registering for VAT? We had three criteria and sorry, three situations. Out of that, two were compulsory. What were the two compulsory situations for registering for VAT? We had two compulsory situations to register for VAT. What are those two? Can anyone recall? When threshold exceeds 85,000, uh, what threshold? That is the question. Basically, I would say this goes based on there were two tests. Historical one and future prospects. So either we have to go backward 12 months and say at if any point we are exceeding 85,000 or we have to see future whether we are expecting to cross 85,000 within the next month. These are the two compulsory registration situations. So we don't have future data for her. We only have the past data. So based on that, we have to see when has she surpassed the 85,000 threshold. 
after she surpasses that, she has 30 days. Agree or not? Great. Then let's see at which point she has surpassed this uh, 85,000 threshold. So I have put the monthly revenue here. Yes, must multiply within 30 days. Right, so in September, she is surpassing the limit, 85,500. So that means by October, she has to inform. Informing 1st of November. Yes, she has to inform by no October. And as a result, she has to start charging VAT from 1st of November onwards. So the answer would be second one, 1st November 2021. Are we good? Any questions from anyone? All right, great. Then I'm moving on to question number 27. What amount of pre-registration input that would Alisa have been able to recover in respect of input incurred prior to the date of her registration of VAT? Okay, for when it comes to pre-registration, so both these, we are both aspects that we are talking about are services. Website design is also a service. Advertising is also a service. So for how long can we go backward and claim for pre-registration pre input VAT? How long can we go back? Yes, only six months we can go back. So that means VAT relating to design, so website design, six months, advertising also six months. But only thing we have to be mindful, website design is inclusive and uh, what do you call advertising is exclusive. Having that in mind, let's see how to calculate. So website design, I apply the fraction. Fraction is just divide by six because the rate is 20%. Advertising, I multiply by 20%. So the overall, it will be 456, like Nafis said. Are we okay? Any questions on how I derived on this answer? Right. Then question number 28. What is the maximum amount of input VAT which Elisa can reclaim in respect of her motor expenses for the quarter ended 31st March 2022? Anyone tried this one? 28? Has anyone tried 28? Okay, now fees has got 180. The others? Muas, Eshma, Raisha, how about you guys? Okay, let's give a try now. Simply, the repair will come into the picture. Fuel will come into the picture. Some of that would be 1080 uh, pounds. These are inclusive of that. So just apply the fraction. 180 would be the answer. We are good. We took the two. Both are inclusive of that. So we apply the fraction. Uh, Ashma, are you okay now? Great. Next one. Complete the following sentence by matching the correct due date and 
payment method into the relevant target area. Elisa have to pay any VAT liable for the quarter ended 31st March 2022 by when? What is the deadline to pay the VAT? Yes, she has to pay by 7th of May, one month and seven days from the end of quarter. Good. How should she pay? Any payment method is fine or electronic needs to be done. It should be electronic because they are really, really forcing the taxpayers to go for the electronic method. So the payment needs to be done by 7th of May 2022 using an electronic method. Any questions up to now? Great. The last question in section B. Identify by clicking on the relevant box in the table below which of the following items of information is not required to be included in Alicia's VAT in valid VAT invoice. So customer VAT registration number and invoice number, customer address, a description of the service provided. Logically think, even if you forget, logically think, out of these information, if you are the HMRC, what is not that relevant for you? Customer VAT number. Okay, I got one answer from Nafis as customer VAT number. The others? Okay, I got one answer from Muas as customer address. So logically, think you can tell me, guys. Huh? Eshma, Raisha, what are your thoughts? I would say customer address. Uh, okay, so I have few answers. Majority goes for option one, customer's VAT registration number. So is there any, okay, think as HMRC. If you are the HMRC, will you require the customer VAT identification number? Okay, if you are the HMRC, you need that. Do you need the customer address if you are the HMRC? It's not that important, okay? Do you need the invoice number if you are the HMRC? Yes, you might need that. Do you need the description of the services supplied? Yes. Then what should be the answer? Right. So we got the answer, right? Customer address. So even if you don't know the answer for a question like this, logically we can figure out the answer. That's what we did right now, right? We did not know the exact answer, but we logically try to figure out what is the correct answer. So we derived at that. So these kind of theory questions have an advantage like that as well. 
even though we do not memorize, even if you do not get the exact correct answer from our memory, we can try to have this Sherlock Holmes theory that I always use. Think. If I am in that position, what do I need? Then do a backward calculation. Easily we will derive at the correct answer. Are we good? Right. So moving on to section C. Okay, now the decision is up to you guys. Do you guys want to discuss section C? Okay, Ishma once again, guys. Uh, so if we do not discuss what we can do is you guys can attempt it, then I can share the answer with you all. How we derive on the answers. We have two options. Either way, you guys prefer. I'm okay either way. Okay, then we'll go ahead. I'm okay anyway. But you guys have to stay in the class. Huh? Around 8.30 to 9. Uh, you guys are silent and no one is responding. And then I'm getting a message. We are having dinner. That cannot be accepted. Are we having a deal? Right. <laughs> then let's go ahead. Okay, in section C, when you are starting, as I always say, first look at the requirement. So the requirement is calculate the overall savings of tax and NIC for the year ended 5th April 2022. If Joe had instead paid her, uh, himself a gross director's remuneration of 8,000 and dividends of 46,170. Yeah, yeah, as long as you guys respond, I don't have any issue. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just kidding, guys. Just respond. And meantime, have your dinner. That's okay. I was just kidding. So, uh, seems like the question is somewhere. Currently, he's having a sole tradeship or something like that. And now he's thinking about paying a dividend and a director's remuneration seems like that from the requirement to me let's go through the question now joe is the managing director and 100 percent shareholder of ok joe limited he has always withdrawn the entire profit uh, of the company as director's remuneration Definitely. Compared to the other papers, the amount of writing that you have to do is less in section C. But there are certain calculations where you have to think a lot before you come up with the answer. Yes. Specimen, don't rely too much. That is just another paper for you to practice. Don't expect the answer questions as same as specimen will be there in the exam. Don't get deceived by that. Specimen is just a paper for you guys to practice. <laughs> it's not crashing guys, it's preparing. So let's get prepared for the worst case, not for the best case. Then we'll be in good hands, isn't it? Yes, it's the truth. So let's be prepared for the worst. Then if something good comes, we are happy. But if something bad comes also, then we are prepared. Let's be prepared for the worst. Great. So uh, he has always withdrawn the entire profit of the company as the director's remuneration. But given a recent increase in profitability, he wants to know whether this basis is extracting the profit, profits is beneficial. So that means just taking it as the remuneration is it beneficial. That's what we are trying to 
look at now. For the year ended 5th April 2022, OK Joe Limited taxable profits, sorry, total profits before taking account the director's remuneration are 65,000 after allowing for employers class 1 insurance contribution that is 6810 joe's gross director's remuneration is 58190 okay 65 minus this 6810 the figure of employers nic does not deduct the 4000 employment allowance as this is not available since Joe's the only employee of the company. Fine. So 4,000 also we don't need to consider. Now, how are we going to calculate this? It's a very basic question. What are we going to do now? They're asking for overall tax savings. Yes, we can simply get the gap between the current one and the previous one. That can be done. So what am I going to do here is director's remuneration is 58,190. Personal allowance I'm taking out. So the taxable income for Joel under the old method would be 45,670. Out of that, 37,700 will go for the basic rate band. 7,920 will go for the higher rate band. So in the previous method, he would have done 8. Are we agreeing on that? Great. Then the new method. New method in the sense first calculating the NIC. 58,190. Tax free amount 12,570. This is uh, what you called the employer's point of view. Because from the company's point of view, how much we are paying? Sorry, from uh, Joe's point of view, how much he is paying, we have to calculate. Because there are also be, be a gap, they are asking for both. NIC and income tax, both. So we have to calculate the overall one. So I am calculating the employee NIC as well. So up to 37,700, it will be 13.25. Balance 7920 will be at 3.25. We are agreeing on that as well. Right. Then I am adding the employer NIC also. So the overall tax as a result of the previous method would be 22,771. We are good with that. Awesome. Then the new method. Now we have to have a tabular method because we do have dividend income also. Since the dividend income is there, we have to have a tabular format now. So non-savings income. Now the director's remuneration is only 8,000. I'm taking that here. The balance goes to dividend income, 46,170. I take that here. Then the total tax, total income will come to 54,170. Then I claim the personal allowance, which leads to no remaining non-savings income to be taxed. The entire taxable income is now coming from the dividend income. Are we agreeing on that as well? Super. Then I'm calculating the income tax. 
So 2000 goes under the nil rate band. As a result, basic rate band will come down by 2000. So 35,700 at 8.75, the lower rate. Higher rate band, balance 3,900 at 33.75. So the income tax would remain at 4,440. We are good with that as well. Great. Then the NIC. Now there won't be any AI NIC, isn't it? Will there be any employer NIC sorry employee NIC will there be any employee NIC now there won't be right because only employment income will be liable for NIC which is below the 12570 limit so there is no employee NIC in this case Eshma agree Great. Then the employer one. 65,000. Now director's remuneration we can allow to be deducted. So we deducted that. Corporation tax comes into the picture at 19%. 10,830. Again, uh, employer NIC is also not there because that is also below the threshold. Overall tax remains at 15,270 in this case. As a result, we do have a tax savings of 7,501. Are we okay? Any doubts or any questions in this one? Moas, Nafis, Raisha, how about you guys? Uh, Moas, Nafis, Rahija, are we okay with this particular question? Class 4. No, class 4 does not come into the picture because Class 2 and Class 4 are applicable for self-employment, right? That means individuals run the business. But here we are talking about a company. So for corporates, Class 2 and Class 4 does not come into the picture. Class 2 and Class 4 comes into the picture only for people who are running the business as individuals. Great. So I hope this part, the question number one in section C is clear for all of you. Can I move on to the next question? Okay. I'm going to the next question then. So we have around four requirements here. First one, state two advantages of choosing 5th April as a counting date rather than a date early in the tax year such as 30th April. Question number two, calculate the revised tax adjusted trading loss for the nine month period ended 5th April 2022. Question number C, explain why it would not be beneficial for Azura to claim loss relief under the provisions giving Relief to loss, relief to a loss incurred in the early years of trade. Okay, fine. Uh, D, assuming that Azura claims loss relief against her total income, calculate the taxable income. Okay, fine. Not that tough. Part A, uh, the advantages of selecting an accounting period closer to the end of tax year. What are the advantages we have there?
any advantage that we can have on here? Great. So both answers are given here. Superb. One is the overlap profit we can control because we are in line with the taxi itself. Second one, subsequent calculations will also be easy since we are aligning that to the, what do you call, taxia. So the two advantages you guys came up with. Are we okay? Okay, great. Uh, question number two, calculate Azura's revised tax adjusted trading loss for the nine month period ended 5th April 2022. Okay, let's start discussing. Azura has been employed by Rift PLC since 1st of Jan 2019. She has also been self-employed since 1st of July 2021. Uh, preparing her first accounts for the nine month period ended 5th of April 2022. The following information is available for the tax year. So they are asking for tax adjusted trading loss. So, do we need to bother about the employment income? They are asking for the tax adjusted trading loss. So, do we need to bother about the employment income part? Guys, what are your thoughts? Do we need to really bother about employment? Yeah, I got one answer from Eshma as no. Okay. Where are the others? Can I have your answers, please? All right. Okay. Let's start with self-employment. Azura's tax-adjusted trading loss based on her draft account for the nine-month period ended is 3,300. Uh, this figure is before making any adjustments required for we have around uh, 4 adjustments. Number 1, advertising expenditure of £800 incurred during Jan 2021. This expense has not been deducted in calculating the loss of 3300 So can we allow this to be deducted? This 800, can we allow it to be deducted? Great, we can. So if we allow it to be deducted, what will happen to the loss? Superb, the loss will go up. So I'm going to the answer now itself. So 3,300 is the loss. By the advertising one, the loss will go up. Then the cost of Azura's office, they have given a note. Note number two. Azura runs her business using one of the five rooms in her private house as an office. The total running cost of the house for the nine-month period ended were 4,350, calculating the loss of 3,300. So what should we do now?
Yes, great. So we need to apportion this cost, isn't it? This is a five floor, five, five rooms building. Out of that, she is using one room for her office. So the overall cost we need to apportion for one room and deduct it from the trading profit. So that's what I'm going to do here. 4,350 divided by five. That we are deducting. Are we good with that as well? So now the loss goes up again. We are good with that? Right. Then the capital allowances are also not adjusted. Let's walk through the capital allowances also and see. On 10th June 2021, Azura purchased a laptop computer for 2600 on 1st July 2021, Azura purchased a motor car for 25,600. The car has a CO2 emission rate of 117 grams per kilometer. During the 9-month period ended 5th April 2022, Azura drove total of 8,000 miles, of which 2,500 were for self-employment business journeys. So first of all, laptop. What can we do for laptop under capital allowances? Great. For the laptop, simply we can grant AIA, Annual Investment Allowance. Good. For the motor car, what can we do? First of all, which pool are we going to classify this car? I got one answer as special rate pool, the others? I would say better to keep it in a separate pool for private usage because this car is used for both private and official usages. So better to keep it in a separate pool. So what am I going to do now? I have the cost. Then I claim for the WDA under the special rate pool rate because if this was fully used for business, then it would have been under the special rate pool. So I'm claiming under the special rate pool that will come to 1,536. That I apportion for nine months. From that, I take only the office use. That, uh, that means 8,000 divided by 8,000 multiplied by 2,500. So 360 pounds I'm adjusting. Once I adjust that, the tax adjusted trading profit will come to 7,930. Are we good? Any doubts? All right, great. Then next one for two marks. Explain why it would not be beneficial for Azura to claim loss relief under the provisions giving relief to a loss incurred in the early years of trade. You should assume that the tax, uh, tax rates and allowances for 2022 will also apply in previous tax years as well. Okay, So what is the disadvantage going for the early tax years? So you are, are you getting where they are trying to touch? They are trying to touch the opening year reliefs. So we had something for individuals. We had something where we can go and claim for previous three tax years as well. If it is the first accounting year, first tax year. But against the total income. Can you recall we had something like that?
we had something called first year relief, which allowed us to go back three years and set off against the total income on the trading losses. Yes, under 54 basis, good. So now the question is, they are trying to touch that area and they are asking us, uh, what are the disadvantages for Azura in doing that? What do you think? Yes, I would say by doing this, by going back, we are going against the total income. So we haven't calculated her income tax liability or the employment income yet. But doing this might lead to a loss of personal allowance. And other benefits such as if there are any savings income for her, which doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, the other benefits also might be lost. Given this is a first taxi and the loss is also a very small amount, seems like next year she might be able to go for a profit. Then she can use the trading income itself to set off this loss instead of losing the stuff like personal allowance and all. Plus, if we are doing that, we have to go back and amend the returns as well, which is again a bit of a hectic task. If you are carrying forward, you don't need to amend the returns as well. These are the two things that we have to explain here. Are the two points clear? Great. Then the last one. Assuming that Azura claims loss relief against the total income for the tax year 2021-2022, calculate her income tax. Okay. To do that, first of all, we have to consider her employment income. So gross annual salary, nothing to worry. We can straight away take that. Then the next one, on 1st Jan 2022, Azura personally paid two subscriptions. The first was a professional subscription of 320 paid to a professional body. Second was a subscription of 680 to a health club, uh, which Azura regular uses to meet the company clients. Azura was not reimbursed for the cost of either of these subscriptions. So can we deduct, what can we deduct? Professional subscription we can deduct. But health club subscription, we cannot deduct because the company did not ask her to do that. She herself decided to go ahead with that. So that is her personal expense in that case. But professional subscription, we allow it to be deducted. So 320 can be deducted. 680, we do not allow to be deducted. Are we good? Great. Then during the tax year, she has used her private motor car for business purposes. She drove 3,400 miles uh, in the performance of her duties uh, for the company, for which the company has paid her an allowance of 55 pennies per mile. Uh, what is the area they are trying to tap here? Yes, they are trying to tap the mileage allowance. Fortunately for us, mileage is only 3,400. So we don't need to worry too much. Simply we can take the gap and multiply. Yes, exactly. 55 minus 45. 
into the mileage. So 3,400 is a mileage, 0.55, that means uh, 55 pennies minus 45 pennies into the mileage of 3,400, simple as that. Are we good with the mileage allowance also? Awesome. Then during the tax year, Azura contributed 2,800 into the company's occupational pension scheme and 3,200, sorry, 3,400 gross personal pension. So we have two, occupational pension as well as personal pension. Occupational pension, what are we going to do? Great. Occupational pension scheme, we can straight away deduct from the employment income. We cannot deduct the personal pension, so let's keep it aside for the time being. Total income, 53,820. Uh, 53, yes, personal pension is similar to gift aid. Then we have a loss relief. We identified the loss earlier, 7,930. I am deducting that here. Then the net income would be 45,890. Personal allowance, 12,570. So the taxable income is going to be 33,320. So that's what they are asking from us. Are we okay with this question as well? Any doubts? Great. Then I'm moving on to the last question in this particular paper. So I'm going to go through the requirements first of all. So we do have two requirements. Calculate 10th limited taxable profit for the four-month period ended 31st July 2021. B. Calculate the 11th limited taxable, so tax-adjusted trading profit for the six-month period ended 31st March 2022. Okay, two different calculations. So I'll start with 6th, sorry, 10th. Mobile is a serial entrepreneur regularly starting and disposing of businesses. On 31st July 2021, 10th Limited, a company owned by Marble ceased trading. On 1st October 2021, 11th Limited, another company owned by Marble commence trading. So we have been given with the information. For the total of four month period trading uh, ended 31st July 2021, 10th Limited had a tax adjusted trading profit of 52,400. This figure is before taking into account of capital allowances. So I'm going to start with this number. Here itself, I am going to start. Tax adjusted trading profit, I kept it here. Then coming to the adjustments. On 1st April 2021, the tax written down value of the company's main pool was 12,400. On 3rd June 2021, the company has purchased a laptop computer. On 31st July 2021, the company sold all of the items included in the main pool at the start of the period for 28,200 and the laptop computer for 1,300. None of the items included in the main rate uh, main pool was sold for more than its original cost. So what are we going to do? Are we going to claim AIA for the laptops to start with? Laptops has been purchased in the current year. So are we going to claim for AIA? Great. It is the last period of accounting. The company has ceased on this particular tax year. So we cannot grant any AIA, WDA or whatever. So what we are going to do is whatever the purchases we add to the pool, whatever the disposals we just deduct from the pool. That's all what we are going to do. So I have a working for that. Opening balance 12,400. I took it. Laptops addition. I added it. Sale of opening assets, 
28,200. Sale of laptops, 13,300. So I have a balancing charge of 15,300 because whatever additions are less than the disposals. So I have a gain. I have to charge 15,300 I take here. Are we good with that? Great. Then the next one is about, okay, after that they are talking about some buildings and all. So I get the total here and give it as the tax adjusted profit. So I just italic that just to catch the eye of the examiner. 67,700 would be the tax adjusted trading profit. Are we good with that also? Great. Uh, on 31st, On 31st July 2021, 10th Limited sold the company's freehold office building for 130,300. The building was purchased on 3rd May 2014 for 151,334. Index cost is 164,500. Okay. I'm going to go for a working for this one because we have the indexation. So sales proceeds I have here, cost I took here, net is 28,966, index cost is 164,500. So the gap between the index cost and the cost would be the indexation allowance. So I took that 13,166, I deduct that from the gain. So the chargeable gain in this case would be 15,800. Are we good? Great. I'm just mapping it to here as well. I'm just linking it to here because it comes to my TTP. Then during the four month period in the 31st July 2021, 10th Limited let out one floor of its freehold office building, which was always surplus to the requirements. The floor was rented at £1,200 per month. But the tenant left owing the rent for July 2021, which 10th Limited was unable to recover. The total running cost of the office building for the four month period ended 31st July 2021 was £6,300, for which one third related to the let flu. The other two third is running cost that have been deducted on the tax adjusted trading profit. So the property income, I'm again giving a working for that. Working number three. So the rent, it's a company, so we go by the accrual basis. Whether we received or not, doesn't matter. Monthly rent is 1,200 into four. 4,800. Operating cost, I just apportion, we have an operating cost of uh, 6,300, but that is relating for all four, four, for all four flows. So I'm dividing by four, 2,100 and one month rent, we couldn't recover. I consider it as impairment. So overall property income will become 1,500. Are we good with that as well? Awesome. There was another point. During the four month period ended 31st July 2021, they have made a qualifying charitable donation. Okay, there's a QCD as well. So I map this property income to the top. Then my total income becomes 85,000. From that, I deduct the QCD. The TTP for the 10th limited will become. 84,200. This is the answer for part A of the question. Are we good? Any doubts? Okay, awesome.
then part b also i am starting here itself because we have been asked to compute the profit once more 11th limited operating profit for the 6 months period ended 31st march 2022 is 122900 I am starting with that 122,900. I jotted it down here itself. Then they say a depreciation of 2,580 and an amortization of leasehold property of 2,000 has been deducted to arrive this figure. So I am going to add those two back because depreciation or amortization, both of these are not allowed to be deducted for tax purposes. So I am adding back the depreciation as well as the amortization. Are we good with that? Awesome. Then point number two says on 1st October 2021, 11th Limited acquired a leasehold office building paying a premium of 60,000 uh, for the grant of a 15 year lease. The office building was used for business purposes by 11th Limited throughout the six months period ended 31st May 2020, 31st March 2022. So simply this is the lease premium story. So what we are going to do, I'm going to give a working and take the premium pay, which is 60,000. Then I do the deduction. So the deduction would be premium paid into the official rate of 2%. Uh, into n minus 1, least in, uh, in, in years minus 1. So 60,000 into 2% into 15 minus 1 means 14. So overall comes to 43,200. But this is for a period of 15 years. So to figure out the annual amount, I divide it by 15. But we were not operating throughout the year as well. The operations was only there for 6 months. So I time a portion for 6 months as well. 2880 divided by 12 into 6. We are good. Lease premium. Any doubts guys? Uh, Eshma is fine. The others are you guys are also okay with the lease premium? Right. Then I am moving on to the next one. Uh, on 1st October 2021, 11th Limited purchased two new motor cars. The first motor car cost 12,600 and has a CO2 emission rate of 40 grams per kilometer. This car is used as a pool car for the company employees. The second car cost 13,200, has a CO2 emission, has a zero CO2 emission rate per kilometer. This motor car is used by Marble. And 45% of the mileage is for private journeys. Okay, for the first one, what are we going to claim? Can we claim AIA? For the first car, can we claim AIA? Great, we can't claim AIA. Can we claim FIA? We can't do that as well. Can we claim WDA? Can we claim WDA, guys? Yes, we can claim WDA, but we do have to time a portion that. It's a low emission car, so we can take it to the main pool. Second car, can we claim... Uh, AIA, the zero CO2 emission car, which is partially used by the owner for personal use. Okay, no AIA. Can we claim FYA? Yes, we can claim FYA. Do we need to apportion FYA since it's partially used for private purposes? We don't because it is a company. So for companies, we do not consider the private adjustment. So we can claim the FIA fully for the 
second car. So what I am going to do, FYA, I fully claimed WDA 18% and I time apportion that. So are you okay with that? Great. Then the last point. On 1st October 2021, Marble made a loan of 100,000 to 11th Limited at an annual interest rate of 5%. This is a commercial rate of interest and no loan repayments were made during the year. The loan was used to finance the company's trading activities. Can we allow this interest to be deducted? Loan given by the owner himself. Can we deduct this interest? Great, we can because the entity concept comes into the picture. Company has a separate legal entity from the owner and the loan is taken for trading purpose. Yes, therefore this loan interest is allowed to be deducted. So simply 100,000 into 5% and time apportion for six months, which comes to 2,500. Tax adjusted trading profit for 11th limited would be 109,260. Sorry, 206. Are we good? Any doubts? Awesome. So with that, this paper comes to an end. Any queries from your end before we wind up? Are there any queries from your end? that you need to get clarified from me before the exam. Anyone? Any kind of a query that you need to get clarified from me before the exam? All right, great. So with this, then let's conclude our TRG session. So thank you everyone for joining with this one. So wish everyone best of luck for the exam. We have only one week remaining. So we discuss what needs to be done at the beginning of the class itself for the rest of the period. Yes, I'll share the answers after the class. And uh, I hope the sessions were helpful for you all. We tried our level best to customize it for your requirements and help you guys for the best method that we can do. Hopefully it was helpful for you all. So good luck guys. And all of you all have my contact number. If there is anything, any clarification about taxation, just reach out to me. I will definitely help you guys out. So good luck again and hoping to hear a good news from all of you all about the results. Uh, please share the results with me because uh, that's what keeps us happy to hear a result. So please make sure that you guys share the results with me after the results. Doesn't matter what happens, just share the results. Okay, great. So theory fellows, we'll meet up for our last class on Sunday. TRG guys, good luck for y'all and we'll meet, uh, we'll get in touch if there is any queries. Good luck again. Take care guys. See you all then. Good night. You are most welcome.